Richard Fowler is a musician's musician, one of those people who can play all the instruments. He's written plays, musicals, films, and directed an off-Broadway musical in New York. Richard is also an educator. After years of teaching at the Sydney Conservatorium of Music, he studied feature films and music and is now finalising his PhD about that. I'm Brett Farrell and this is The Lock-In. Well, Richard, how are you? I'm doing all right. Not too bad. You locked away? Uh, Mostly. Um, I'm one of the fortunate ones who's got a little bit of work outside still going on, but uh, as a as a budding filmmaker, I'm really just a hold up in my office, uh, as my wife calls it, the office at the end of the house. The other thing, Richard, is you're also an educator. And with the announcements today about schools closing and kids not being able to go to school, would love to know what you think that's going to be like for teachers at the moment. Teachers, I think, are going to respond to that the same way that, um, that parents would which is that um, if you put the kid first, you're really likely to, to hope that they'd be in the best hands. Um, if the crisis is an educational, um, has got education as a high priority, then schools are the best place for them and parents would agree with that. But if the crisis is a health crisis, then they'll probably be happier for them to be anywhere else except for where um, they'll be in more jeopardy. So home seems to be the better place but i can tell you the teachers will be responding thinking um, we release the beautiful children into the hands of the parents knowing that health is way more important than education at that point but we'd love to have them yeah but you know as parents the other thing we really want to do is make sure that they keep up their practice for example and how, how is that actually going to be possible when when one-on-one lessons are hard how do you practice in an ensemble how you how you meant to uh, actually do it. Well, uh, I think we're probably a couple of G's away from being in the same room, although in different parts of the world. Uh, there have been some experiments made about playing in ensembles in different parts of the world, but uh, and and we still have a little bit of timing lag, um, depending on how good the grade equipment that we're using. And that's going on today in Australia and, and overseas, and we've done some work playing in ensembles in different places. But for kids at home, we're, uh, we're borrowing off internets that are unstable there'll be no joint playing. There could be some terrific um, sessions done where you could have lessons online. I think that's been going on for quite a few years and uh, I'm sure it's true for you, Brett, as it is for me. Is um, I've certainly made uh, YouTube one of my best teaching friends because there's some wonderful stuff on there and I imagine that school is just an extension of that for the next few few weeks. Is that is that probably the better tip for parents at the moment? Have a look on YouTube. We've got some other things to help parents survive. Uh, my thoughts for parents uh, of kids who are artistic uh, and particularly music kids, uh, which you were outlining, uh, would be to to create as many opportunities to be in front of educators. And YouTube is an amazing place to go. Uh, only recently I saw um, a camera aloft above a set of hands sitting over a keyboard playing one of the most beautiful pieces of music I've ever seen, and they do it in slow motion and teach you the chords as they go. I know that I could probably play that even though um, I, that's way above my pay grade as a piano player. And I thought, gee, you know, the things that you can do these days with, uh, with, with technology and some really creative folk, I imagine that if you can get those opportunities, not just with YouTube that's already available, but with live teachers, you're going to see the kids soar in their education even though they're locked in. And uh, just going broadly now, Richard, what do you see this current situation like for musicians and the arts generally? Um, I mean, no one's working, so what, what's that going to look like? Well, well, I think initially it's uh, appalling um, because, you know, we are people who are born to be a community and communities are, are currently um, used, terrible term, I'm sure no one really loves the term self-isolation. Um, that's really uh, a, a very deep blow to a musician and or a singer or an entertainer um, because we're not isolates. We've been trained to work with others and, and to reach out to others. But the magnificence of the internet, imagine this happening 20 years ago, it would be just much worse, much more appalling. So I think for musicians, yeah. my, my hope is that they start to think as creatively as they are and singers and start to find some unique places to reach their audiences via 
this this wonderful device land that we've got and maybe build communities together online. I've seen some fantastic things go up by our great arts environments. Uh, so, uh, so, and those environments are, please upload your stuff. Let's get it all up here. Let's reach out to people as musician make, music makers and, and singers. So I think- What, what, do you, what are your favourite sites, Rich? What do, you, what do you like looking at for these community and being around other musicians when you can't physically be in the same well, I've, I've, got to, I've got to be honest there. Uh, I've seen them because I, my heart goes out to, to my tribe, my tribe of artists. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm using this time, uh, Brett, as an opportunity to dive into projects that demand a whole lot more of my time. So maybe that's advice or maybe that's just my personal story. I wouldn't know the websites because I've been um, probably – trying to think creatively about having more time uh, to myself and therefore but do you think, writing. Do you, sorry, right. just, but just on that, Rich, we, we talked a little bit about being together and that's how we design, mm-hmm. but can creativity thrive in isolation in any form? Uh, absolutely. I think that there are a good portion, as most writers and artists know, a good portion of our uh, personal preparation comes from the quiet place. Um, that could even be in a crowd. I've seen many a... Many a writer. Uh, I know one of my favourite writers, Malcolm Gladwell, sits in a, a little cafe, uh, you know, a few few blocks away from where I lived when I was living in New York, and there he is writing some of the finest uh, pieces of works by uh, synthesising other researchers. Um, I know that's not music necessarily, but to me, it's like music to my ears because there he is um, amongst the hubbub of coffee in and out, and he's able to isolate himself. And I think my point, and to your point, is that at some point that needs to emerge uh, through the hands and the voices and the minds and even to the audiences of people that it were created for and created to be alongside of. I think that's the problem at the moment is we need to work out a creative way of getting it together. I've noticed, for example, that Zoom is really useful. Um, I've been doing some work uh, with some writers overseas and uh, we've been sitting in rooms. I've had my guitar on my lap and I'm literally playing tunes to them that are associated with various parts of the works they're looking at me to give them some help for. And uh, with that in mind, uh, Zoom is a great little program. Uh, there's, there's some for free and then there's, you can go to the ones that allow you to get um, pay a little bit and, and do that. I know that a lot of workplaces are doing that. Musicians, we can do that too. So, Rich, you mentioned uh, New York and I know you've directed an off-Broadway musical. What what do you think the arts are going to be like in one of the major capitals? What are you hearing from your connections and your network around around the world? Well, the curiously, Marcus Chong, who lives in New York and one of my close connections there, being a producer of the show that I was working on Broadway, um, on, off-Broadway and on-Broadway, uh, Marcus has just written an article about that very self-same thing. He, um, he put an article together uh, to to describe what it's like in New York, what it's like for the the artist, or what it's like for the people who normally meet together. And uh, at this point in time, he knows, as we all do, that um, that there's that cry to be together or be in community is going to remain until we can solve it uh, in as many creative ways as possible, by res- and still respecting the, the laws of the land. Now, Rich, you may have seen online, I don't know how wide this has travelled, but uh, Neil Diamond sitting in front of his open fireplace, uh, leading everyone in his uh, his uh, lock-in version of Sweet Caroline, um, which, which, which really lifted my spirits, I'm sure thousands of other, millions of other people around the world as well, uh, seeing something like that. So that leads me, how can music and the arts help us all through this at the moment? Well, um how beautiful is that man, Neil Diamond? I don't know if you know, but a, a couple of years ago, he was scheduled to play out here in Australia, and it was his failing health that um, forced him to to, uh, to to kind of limit uh, the amount of performing that he was making. And there he is, uh, embearded and greyed up, and uh, you know, squinting through through a little more aged eyes, and just teaching the world. He's using his music that's that, that probably helped the heart. Now help the mind. Let's clean up. Let's wash our hands. Yes, I, I've seen what's going on. I'm absolutely thrilled that he would allow his song to be used for a health message. And, of course, there's a sense of humour in most musicians. I think that sense of humour is lent in there for him to just go, well, here's a song that, uh, that's been famous and now I want you to use it uh, for, you know, for some uh, difficult, uh, difficult thing. Uh, my sense is that guys like Neil Diamond uh, are just treasures, and, and I'm so thankful that he he stepped up, did that great song. Uh, I don't know if that's enough of an expression for artists who are growing. 
uh, like myself, I think we probably need a little bit more touchstone. This beautiful man is um, is very lofty <laughs> to us, and uh, but writing a health song might not be the pinnacle of our goals at the moment. Nevertheless, uh, you know, just total respect. Hats off. Fantastic. But that's, but that's that's always the thing. You mentioned musicians got a great sense of humour, and they do. But there's also to the industry and to the profession. There's also that there the you know that dark side that that's, that makes you wanted that can beat you down. Um, so w- w- with that in mind, what's what's the do you think musicians and probably all of us actually can do to keep our mental health in good shape? I mean, is it for a musician and an artist to simply play or write or paint? It's it's a it's a good question. I, I don't know if I know exactly the answer. Uh, I, I can only say probably what I would do, which is that I wouldn't let myself um, go too far without reaching out to friends. And if I've got something that I'm writing or something that I'm enjoying, um, but it's taking me to a little bit of a darker place, I'd probably share it earlier because I wouldn't be able to um, if I was just all by myself, I'd probably end up in a deep, deep, dark hole. That's very possible, probably for anyone who who has some of those beautiful, deep, dark thoughts. You know, B flat minor isn't the same, isn't the right key for every song. You'll notice if you look at the history. <laughs> um, you know, I, I know that the argument at the moment is that D minor is the saddest of all keys, but you know, I'm going to go for B flat minor. I think that we've got to stay away from those keys sometimes. Actually, actually, Richard, <laughs> Richard, do you, do you happen to have um, your guitar handy? Uh, I could Where certainly make it handy. It's um, both of them are actually at the fixes. The the reason I. Can you just grab one sure. of them? Well, uh, just because you, the reason you, you just talked about the D, the D minor and the the B flat minor and all these other chords, um, why don't we bring it to life a little bit and just talk us through what what those chords sound like and why they're sad and maybe we can end on something happy. I don't know, but I just figure if your guitar is handy, why don't we um, why don't we just hear it and and and, and if you do happen to have a uh, Richard Fowler original that hasn't uh, been published anywhere. You want to share that with us as well? Please go ahead. Debuted here on the login. Oh, that's, but that's a just, beautiful just idea. Back, okay, so here's the here's just the back argument. To your sad here's chords. the argument. Okay, so it's been said. I'll just tune my bottom string down. So the argument is this, Brett, is the sound small key. So you have to be our little arbiter here. So here's the here's the key for you. Here's this. You ready for this one? Now, we hear the chord, and we're likely to sing one of three notes, all right, because every chord's got three notes in. So if I sing, let's say, the the fifth of the chord, which is our highest end of the chord, if I go, Brett, it's so beautiful to hear your voice. It's so low. All right, so that's on the fifth. What about if I go for the, the third, okay? Brett, it's oh dude that actually is too sad i don't think i'm going to do that one now i want to push for b flat minor <laughs> listen to this guy Stop. listen to this guy i'm serious you listen to this guy okay oh, 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 oh dude okay let's go from Brett, it's so beautiful to hear your voice it's so rich and See that one? Dude, dude, dude. I'm thinking that is definitely the darkest and saddest of all keys. So, folks, let's stay away from B-flat minor. Yep. Okay, give us a happy song. Okay. Okay, well, if you just take that D minor. Just, just, I think the saddest part there, Richard, was more that um, you, you, you used my name in a song. Oh. Really weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's made it a bit sadder. But let, let's hear a, maybe a happy Happier version. <laughs> okay. Well, if we're going to get, I mean, I don't know. That's that's asking a little bit. Uh, let's see. We go here. So I'm just going to take one of those chords. In fact, how about I do this? Here's the challenge: put B flat minor and D minor into a song and 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 turn it into something beautiful. And let's see if we can do that. That means that all musicians that are on the deepest and darkest ends of their writing can end up in some sunny place. Let's see if we can do that. I'll tune up first. Let's see. If we, let's. To making the happy out of sad, working miracles here at the Well, Lockheed. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the sad. I mean, I guess we're full of all the colours of the rainbow and the spectrums are full of all colours. So if we end up with, let's see if we can work this out. Let's go, we're going to start on one of them. I think I'm going to start on the saddest of all keys because for me that's like the hardest place to get from. So if we go here. And we'd probably go here. Which is that's that's not staying in the. You could write a song yeah, it is. using all the colours of the rainbow. I'm going to try a trick here again, 
And you could oh, write nice. a song using all that. Now, you know, I want to go, I want to go somewhere real special here. Colors of the rainbow, but you should never call yourself. Here we go. Oh, yes. Let's all stand up and wave our torches in the air. And that's our D minor. See, now we're on to the traditional saddest note. So we go, and we'll just finish here. Weary. And then in musical theatre, we would just use one word. And, you know, one of those beautiful, give us a word, Brett, any word you like. A word that, what's the word that you use when you want to change the subject on a phone call? What is it? Okay, anyway. good, lovely. Weary Anywhere Not dreary And now I'm really getting into the <laughs> land of craziness look, there. Look out. Look out, uh, Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber, <laughs> I think. But, you know, the, the, the interesting thing about that, Richard, listening to you sing traditionally two sad chords the way you just did, I actually felt more uplifted than I did depressed by all that. So there must be something in this. And let's throw the challenge out there. Everyone, put your songs together, B flat minor, yes, is it? And nice D minor. Ones. And turn them into something happy. <laughs> turn the happiness there. That was beautiful, Rich. Thank you for sharing that with You're us. Welcome. Um and and just generally, how is everyone in the family? All everyone well? Yeah, well, we've got um, we've got one of our beautiful kids lives at the base of the Blue Mountains and is teaching. So they're uh, significantly affected by the, um, the the changes that we're we're being asked to address. Uh, but they're sunny and they're really thrilled uh, at the moment. They know they've got work for uh, the rest of the term because they're helping out with the school um, as they as they brace for online teaching. And those kids that struggle yeah. along, but isn't it, and also isn't one of your older your older daughter? Isn't she in the ballet? Yeah, in well, she How's that she going? was um f- she, she was three weeks into rehearsing um you know, for in Covent Garden for the Royal Opera House, and she uh, she was one of the dancers in uh, a, a very famous piece called Junufa um, over there, a Hungarian piece. And uh, and sadly, uh, she was shut down just like uh, every other artistic oh, venue. No. Uh, um, the, the government and the company who hired them very beautifully have said that they're paying their artists out, which is just wonderful from, from a lifestyle wow. perspective. But I can be absolutely sure that even, uh, you know, that she, our daughter would trade um, the money for the opportunity to be able to continue rehearsing with a full orchestra and some of the best singers in Europe. So uh, it was a marvellous um, uh, opportunity. But she's 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 a beautiful, plucky person. She turns around to us and with tears in her eyes, she says, I'm going to make the best of it, Dad. Um, uh, I'm going to get some abs now. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I should do as well in this time. <laughs> <laughs> but is it? But it's a. It's a. It's a. It's a, probably a common tale at the moment of, of, of artistry impacted by this. Do you think, Richard, it's a a postponement, or do you feel like it, maybe for some it could be the last chance to have the dream fulfilled? Oh, I'm utterly sure that there are greater forces than uh, a pandemic at work with regard to what people's callings are. Um, and I use the word callings sort of politely. I, I'm not really sure I know a lot about that word, but. Um, vocationally speaking, we've always we, we ought to be creative even now, no matter what it is, pandemics or apocalypses or whatever we're facing, um, that, yeah, it's probably game-changing things on right now and game-changing things to come. But we can make the adjustment, I have no doubt, particularly if we're vocationally aligned. If, we're, if, it, if the thing that we're doing is the very thing that we always know we should have done, it's the stuff that folks around us really think that, we belong in, if it's our sweet spot and we tend to disappear in it for, for hours at a time, then it's really likely that you've got something I need to hear or I need to see or we all need for that mental health, yours as well, but ours, we need to see, hear and and embrace what it is you've got for us. Put it online. Let us know what you got in the lock the lock in. Help us help us get through it because what you've got to offer might be so much better than a song with B flat and minor and D minor in. 
Well, well, we'll start there. Richard Fowler, thank you so much for sharing about your family, the artists, how we can get through this, and how we can turn sad songs, sad chords, into happiness. You're much welcome, Brett. Thanks for asking. I'm Brett Farrell, and this is The Lock-In.